Dave Parsons obtained his doctorate in plant ecology from Stanford University. He has worked as a research scientist for the National Park Service, including scientifically supporting the fire use program in Sequoia Kings Canyon National Park. Dave recently retired as director of the Aldo Leopold Wilderness Research Institute in Missoula, Montana. In this interview, Parsons gives advice to budding fire research scientists and, as a counterpoint, describes how field-going fire practitioners can better utilize fire scientists and their science. As scientists, I would say you need, you early on need to get out on the ground with some of the fire managers that are actually making things happen, that are having to deal with the questions, understand what their, their issues are. The other thing that jumps to mind is I think where we're headed in the future is we're going to need to recognize the goal of, of restoring what we would call natural or historic fire regimes in the burning the same way they did in the past is probably not practical. I think this goal of naturalness is, is um, because of our because of a number of factors, but our, our inability to put all, ever get the amount of fire back on the landscape that once was there, and the increasing changes in, in vegetation and in climate that are coming about because of climate change, um, mean we've got to revisit what it is we want from these areas, and we've got to, we do need to set our objectives. You know, we've we've been dealing with this in a philosophical level, we, we're talking about beyond naturalness. If naturalness is not going to be a practical goal anymore, what is it we want from these areas? And Because what we do out there is going to determine their future. And I'm, I'm talking what do we want in terms of, of the vegetation, the, the, um, the fire regimes, the, the fauna. I think a lot of scientists um, focus on just what they're trained on. So I, I just wanted, want to re-emphasize the importance of, of putting the, the human dimension to, in this case, the human dimension of, of understanding really what are the issues that, that the people making those decisions are dealing with. And, and it's hard, it's hard, it's gotten a lot harder to get out on fires than it used to be because of, of the qualifications and the, the red cards, all of the different certifications you have to go through. Um, you know, when, when Jan and Jim Agee and Tom Swetnam and I were, were young Turks, there was no, no requirements in what we wore. We were out in, in fires, putting in plots in tennis shoes. Well, not tennis shoes, but it could have been. Nobody was watching over that. We didn't wear no max. I think there's always been a big challenge of a lot of the good science, the data just sits, in, sits on shelves. Um, <clears throat> There's not, that's always going to be a challenge. I would say one, one thing I would recommend is to try to take the time to invite scientists to come interact with you, um, and to talk to managers, the people on the ground, about why they think their work is relevant. Now, the opportunities may come up, for example, when you get a proposal to, to do some work in, in your your forest or, or park, um, you might use that as an opportunity to open a dialogue. So you, you really probably need to, to start with the people, your superiors and the people that have been, been in the game for a while and pick, pick their brains, um, ask a lot of questions. I think having the curiosity um, and showing that is probably the most important trait you can have. If you're really, if you're not interested in what fire history or fire ecology can contribute to your job, then it's it's going to be a tough one. So, um, and I think this can this can can generate snowball with the, with you and your peers, the other young people in the same boat. If you start start questioning, start questioning why you're being asked to do what you're being asked to do. And what kind of what's what might this result in? Um, what's the what's the information base for 
for these actions. I think that would probably be a really good way to get started. And then maybe if you're in an agency that has their own scientists, um, try, to, try to find a way to start with the entree to dialogue with them. The relationship between scientists and fire managers is the primary theme of Dave Parsons' podcast. To further your own growth in using science, or to become a better scientist, ask yourself these questions. On my unit, is there a way I could improve dialogue with fire scientists? And to reverse the question, are there ways scientists could improve their relationships with the field? For a more detailed look at how science is being used by field personnel, see Vita Wright's Joint Fire Science Plan Report. Understanding How Managers Access and Use Science, posted at the Aldo Leopold Wilderness Research Institute. The address is on your screen.